Hi, I'm Harold Bell, and this is the Legends of Inside Sports and the Way We Work. Has anyone seen my brother? On August 19, 2017, comedian Dick Gregory went home to be with the Lord. Dick was from Chicago, and he was a warrior in the game called Life. His leadership as a civil rights activist humanitarian, pioneering comic genius, social commentator, and most important, a man of courage that is unmatched in our community today. I feel honored that he passed my way and made me a better man. He made on-air contributions to my radio sports talk show, Inside Sports, and participated in my nonprofit organization's Kids in Trouble community endeavors. Rest in peace, my brother. We will never see your kind again in this lifetime. Dick was 85 years old, and he is still gone too soon. Much love goes out to his queen, wife Lillian, and his children, who will carry on his legacy big shoes to fill. While I'm paying tribute to Dick Gregory, I want to revisit my tribute to Michael Angelo Graham. He went home to be with the Lord in 1985. He was 72. Mike and Dick had a lot in common. They both loved Washington, D.C. Mike came to D.C. from Savannah, Georgia in the early 40s. Much like Dick, he made a path and a trail for others to follow in the world of entertainment. He was a musician, promoter, editor, and publisher of the New Observer newspaper, one of the oldest black community newspapers in D.C. Michael was a big fan of my sports talk radio show, Inside Sports, as well as my work in the community with neighborhood children in the U Street Corridor. He liked my commentaries I read to end my talk shows, and he encouraged me to write them for the New Observer. He then introduced me to his brother-in-law, the paper's editor, Randy Williams. Randy was an angel in disguise. Michael was married to Randy's sister, May, and we became family. While I was looking for some message music in my archives to pay tribute to Dick Gregory, I found the music that I had used to pay tribute to my big brother Michael over three decades ago. I want to revisit that tribute to Michael again and pay tribute to my early mentor and big brother in the neighborhood, Mr. Shelley Miley. My early years, I was raised by my grandmother, Amy Tyler Bell, on J Street Northeast in Washington, D.C. Living across the street from Grandma Bell were the Miley brothers, Shelley, Howard and Raymond. It is often said it takes a village to raise a child. J Street was truly a village. I don't ever remember seeing a cop growing up on J Street. My first encounter with a cop was when my brother Earl and I moved to a housing project with our mother Maddie called Parkside in Northeast DC. My uncles Ralph, Hope, and Dwight along with the Molly brothers, were the beat cops and law and order on J Street. They laid the foundation for me and my brothers, Bobby and Earl, to become decent human beings and superstars in the game called life. My love goes out to his wife, Anna, and children. This tribute also goes out to my little brother in the struggle, William Brockenberg and his wife and family. 
All three went home to be with the Lord in August 2017. Black folks are often asking, how did we lose all of those once great characteristics and qualities that made our communities great back in the day? We lost them once we decided to become drug dealers, to become pimps in the pulpit, lying and corrupt politicians, judges who became a part of the system of justice and just us, brutal cops, and our God became a dollar bill. It didn't help when black men and women didn't know when it was the right time to sit, kneel, or stand for freedom. We lost it when we ran out of the Dick Gregory's, the Michael Graham, the Shelley Millers, and the Wim Brockenbergs, unselfish black men. Let's revisit my tribute to the unselfish Michael Graham. Hold on for a second. Of this, he was promoted to the position of city editor. Following the death of J. Hugo Warren Jr., editor and publisher in 1983, Mike became the editor in chief. Fifty years ago, Michael Angelo Graham entered show business by winning an amateur contest in his native Savannah, Georgia. The nervous little elementary school boy had seen some exciting theatrical talent since his debut. Mike's stage was the world. As an MC, comic, and producer, he performed throughout the US, South America, and Alaska. Mike's early days were spent with minstrel shows in New Orleans and Savannah, Georgia. He shared the stage with the legends of comedy, funny men like Red Fox, Moms Mabley, Dusty Fletcher, Pig Meat Markham, and many, many more. During his early days, he lived in California, and performers nicknamed him Georgia's Glamour Boy. Mike was a class act, whether it was on the Howard stage or on a U Street street corner. He got the respect of the homeless, the street corner junkie, and the businessmen up and down the U Street strip. His ready smile, dapper appearance, and his saw shoe movements made him a welcome sight when and wherever he appeared. Mike had called Washington, D.C. home since the 1940s. In this area, he performed, produced, promoted, and was the house MC at the famous Howard Theater until the final stage show in 1975. Mike moved back into the theater in the early 80s to produce Oldies but goodies shows, which featured entertainers from the 50s. He has shared the stage with the who's who in black entertainment, such names as Nat King Cole, Lionel Hampton, Louis Jordan, Count Basie, Ruth Brown, Arthur Prysock, Al Hibbler, Al Hibbler, and many, many more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mike helped launch the careers of Van McCoy, Marvin Gaye, the Clovers, Billy Stewart, Johnny Hartman, Don Covey, and countless jazz musicians. He made a short movie, appeared on five television specials, including one he co-produced, recorded a comedy album with funny man Clay Tyson on Stack Records. Mike's performing groups, the Graham Crackers and the Washingtonians, were the first to invade the high-class Washington nightclubs and perform on the Howard Theater stage, where the big entertainment names had appeared. The groups toured with Lucky Milliner's orchestra and had one night stands as far south as New Orleans. During World War II, Mike's Fun for Fighters show toured army camps and USO centers. Mike had success as a songwriter. Among his countless tunes is In My Diary, which is now a standard. It was recorded by Johnny Desmond, and it was the background music for the movie I Will Cry Tomorrow. Other Reed recordings were made by the Moonglows, the Spinners, the Masked Man, and the Agents, Etta James and Bobby Lester. Mike was such a class act 
He never had to use the New Observer newspaper as a stage or to be his own ego. Mike's stage was the world. At this very moment, as I read his credits, Michelangelo Graham is taking his show on the road for the very last time. As the funeral procession travels to Mount Pisgah Baptist Church in Tanner, Virginia, for burial services at 1 p.m. I think this selection here best expressed how I felt about Michael Graham and how Michael Graham felt about the people of the Washington community. You're listening to Inside Sports with Harold Bell, a very special tribute to Michael Graham. This is Inside Sports with Harold Bell, a very special tribute to Michael Graham. We'll be back. All right. Rest in peace, my brothers. This has been the legends of Inside Sports and the way we were. And remember that every black face you see is not your brother, and every white face is not your enemy. Until next time, you can color me gone.